you will look back at the 20th century as one that was all about electricity and computing. This next one is going to be all about biology. I run a software company called Autodesk, and what we do is we make software for people who make things. People who make buildings, roads, bridges, tunnels, cars, planes, every medical device. If you look out in the world, most of the things designed and engineered are done by our customers, and it's all done with software. One of the things that we're looking to do is to try to figure out where new and interesting things are happening. So, where are the emerging technologies? One of the interesting areas is synthetic biology. We are looking to put in the hands of biologists and chemists tools that allow them to build new life forms, to re-engineer life forms to have different properties. I'll give you a good example. So there's a group working at the Wies Institute at Harvard. They've used DNA to build a nanoscale robot that goes into the body, target cancer cells, it finds them, it opens up, and it delivers an anti-cancer fighting drug right there. If you look at the ways we're doing chemotherapy now, it will seem barbaric compared to what's possible in the future. If synthetic biology becomes true and fulfills its promise, there will be all kinds of manufacturing jobs. I think manufacturing is gonna continue forever, but it's gonna change. Technology is getting better at this increasing rate. We now understand people around the world and we're connected in ways that we could have never imagined. I think the internet is ultimately good for us. There are a lot of good examples of the internet really changing the world. Remember, Twitter just half a dozen years ago was a ridicule. And the next thing you know, it was the primary communication vehicle in the Arab Spring that led to regime change. We now have access to more computing power on your phone than existed on the entire planet just about five years ago. Computing has become virtually free. It's now being applied to every walk of life. One of the coolest things I know is 3D printing. What you can do is you can now print out of all kinds of materials. You can print in plastic, you can print in rubber, you can print in metal. You can really print out anything you can imagine, anything you want. I've seen some incredible things printed, but think of a space station. Rather than bringing an inventory of every spare part you might need, bring a 3D printer and print what you need when it fails. When you think about nanotechnology, synthetic biology, 3D printing. It's an incredibly exciting world. There's this big new opportunity out there. There's been this incredible thing, and it's happening worldwide, where everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, everybody wants to be in a startup. It's easier to raise funding. You can look for ideas online. So startups are when a group of people just get together with a good idea, they want to make a business. And it really is outside of what happens in the corporate world. It's just like a band. We have an idea, we want to play together, we want to work together. We go off and we do that. They're kind of the new heroes. In some ways, I'm really glad to see that our heroes are not only sports stars or entertainers. On the other hand, I wish some of the startups were willing to invest for harder problems. It's really nice that we celebrate people who have mastered technology, but at the end of the day, technology, it's about how do we put it in the service of ourselves and how do we solve the grand challenges as a civilization that we're facing.